what a Savior that we have who would love us. We talked about that this morning. If you can join us in the morning services, as Pastor was saying, we are dealing with the pillars of Pentecostal holiness truth. We went through salvation this morning. Uh, we've got another one coming up tomorrow morning. And uh, if you were here this morning, you know what that one is. Amen. And, uh, and, and who knows what the Lord is going to have in store for us in the morning and so just come to these uh, teachings that we're doing in the morning and uh, we just thank God for his presence that is there how many of you believe God can anoint the preaching and the teaching Amen. God can anoint the preaching and the teaching. I'll have you stand for the reading of God's word and I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Job the book of Job I want to look at chapter 14 and I want to look at verse 14 Job chapter 14 in verse 14. I want to deal with a subject that I don't know if people deal with a lot in camp meetings and revivals, but the Lord laid it strongly upon my heart, and I wanted so desperately to figure out how I could work it in, but God led it this way and to do it this way, and so I'm just going to obey the Lord tonight. Amen? We're going to obey the Lord tonight and just believe that God is able to work in a mighty way. Job chapter 14, I want to look at verse 14. If you have it, can you say amen? amen. And the Bible says, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my life uh, are appointed time. Will I wait till my change comes? If a man die, I want to go back to that question. If a man die, shall he live again? And that's what I want to preach to you tonight. Will you stretch forth your hands toward the evangelist tonight? And will you pray for me as I can bring forth God's word tonight? Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And we believe by your power and your strength, almighty God. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise in the name of Jesus. We believe tonight that you are the author and the finisher of our faith and God in the name of Jesus we do look for the strength and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Minister we pray in a powerful way in this place tonight. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus Christ's name we pray and the house said Amen, amen. My brother, I'm going to use this. It might help a little bit tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If a man die, shall he live again? How many of you understand tonight that eternity is important? That your eternal destination is important and where you will spend eternity is important. There is something that you must understand as human beings beings we have a terminal disease it is called death and mortality the current death rate of mortality is 100 percent if jesus christ does not come back soon every person under the sound of my voice will die Every person under the sound of my voice will slip out into eternity. When you consider the facts that are at hand, they say that three people die every second. 180 people die every minute. 11,000 die every hour. And 250,000 people slip out from this world into eternity every single day. And they slip out into eternity and whether that eternity is heaven or whether it is hell they slip out into eternity and this is the heart of Job in this particular verse is as he is asking this question and he is dealing with the struggles of his own personal life he asks the question if a man die shall he live again if a man die shall he live again? I want to ask you three questions tonight. 
I want to ask you three questions tonight. If a man die, shall he live again? If a man die, how shall he live again? And if a man die, where shall he live again? Number one, if a man die, shall he live again? The atheist would tell us and to try to convince us that there is nothing beyond this life that we are in. There is nothing beyond this life that we are in right now. Everything is about the now. Everything is about this life that we're living now. There is no resurrection because there is no God. There is no hope because there's no God. There's nothing awaiting man but a black, cold grave, an abyss of the grave. But the psalmist declares this in the book of Psalms. God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave and for he shall receive me. Aren't you thankful that there is a hope of heaven in Jesus Christ? Aren't you thankful tonight that God said, this is what Daniel says, that they, they that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Hosea said it this way, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. I don't know about anybody else tonight, but I'm going to live in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to live in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't believe that God can raise the dead, would you just look at a few passages of scripture with me? Would you look at the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath and her son who died and Elijah prayed and he was resurrected. Elisha did the same thing with the Shunammite son and he was resurrected. If you don't believe that God can raise from the dead, why don't you ask the soldiers that were down in the valley of the dry bones and yet here is God and God raises them up with the power of his wind and the power of his voice. When you look at Luke's gospel chapter 7 you understand that the widow of Nain her son was raised back to life. Go ask Jarius if he believes if life if there you could be raised from the dead he'll tell you yes Jesus came by and raised my daughter from the grave. Ask brother Lazarus tonight and he'll tell you I was laying stone cold dead in the grave and yet Jesus called my name. Come on tonight, help me preach this thing. And if you don't believe that a person can be raised from the dead, ask Jesus Christ himself, for he was alive. He raised from the dead forevermore. He is the first fruits of them that believe. If a man die, shall he live again? Number two, if a man die, how shall he live again? How shall he live again? How does a man live after death? Have you ever asked the question tonight, what will heaven be like? Have you ever asked the question, what will earth be like? John says that there is a new heaven and a new earth that will come one day when Jesus Christ comes to take control over this life. Paul said it like this, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, I will know in part now, but then I shall know even as I am now known we're gonna know one another in the realms of glory bless God we're gonna know one another in the realms of glory we will know Jesus Christ as he is we will know Jesus Christ as he is John recognized Jesus when he's looked over and he said I see Jesus walking in the midst of the candlesticks and it's like the son of man I see him and I know who he is John wrote in his epistle and he said beloved now we are the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like but when he shall come we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. 
we shall see him as thus if we shall be like Jesus then we will have a glorified physical body just like Jesus Oh my, you ought to shout off the fact that in your glorified body there is no more arthritis. In your glorified body, there is no pain. In your glorified body, I don't know what it is, but every now and then, most of the time, when I get up, I hear a pop every now and then. But bless God, I, I don't know what that is. I don't know what causes it. But bless God, in my glorified body, I won't hear any pops or aches or pains or anything else that's going on because my body is a glorified body. You remember what Jesus said to Thomas? Jesus said to Thomas, he said, handle me, touch me, feel me. I'm not a ghost. I'm not an apparition. I'm a glorified state and a glorified body. Can I tell you, that is exactly the way we are going to be when Jesus Christ comes back. If you're in Christ, Fanny Crosby said it this way, I shall know him, I shall know him and redeemed by his side I will stand I shall know him I shall know him I'll know him by the prince in his hands that we know Jesus Christ that we are going to be like him and have glorified bodies in this life in this life to come that is that when you look at the Bible there is an account in 2 Samuel in which David's son, first son by Bathsheba, dies. He prays, only seven days old, and he dies. And he prays, and he weeps, just like many of us would do with a child that is sick. He prays, and he weeps, and he cries over that child, and yet the child dies. And here are the people that surround him, because David got up, he washed his face, he anointed himself and he had a bite to eat and the people around him are ridiculing him because saying how dare you your son has just died how can you eat this is David's response to this interesting question David says while the child was alive I wept and I fasted and I prayed for who knows but what God would be gracious to me and who knows that God would have spared his life and made him better but now that the child is dead what need of I to fast again I can't make him alive and this is what David says I cannot go he cannot come back to me but there is coming a day when I will go and see him. Have you ever had a lost loved one who has died and gone to be with Jesus Christ and you cried and you wept? I'm telling you tonight that God is setting up an account and an appointment to where you will be reunited with your loved ones forever and ever and ever. I like what Job said. How shall I live again? I like what Job said. Job said, for I know that my Redeemer liveth and in that day he shall stand and I will see God for myself I will see him and not another and I will behold him with my glorified eyes I will see him as myself for myself in a glorified state where there is no pain and no cancer, and no sorrow, and no sickness, and no sadness, and no destruction. But bless God, we shall see Jesus. Those of us who know him down here will not have to have an introduction up there. 
for we know him and see him and we will just get reacquainted if you will with Jesus Christ and Jesus will say well done thou good and faithful servant where shall if a man dies where shall he live again Daniel says that some will live unto everlasting life and some will live to shame and everlasting content contentment let me deal with the shame and everlasting contentment first because it is a place called hell you don't hear too many preachers preaching on a place called hell but hell is a reality it is a place of everlasting judgment it is a place that Jesus preached on more so than he did anything else it is a place of everlasting judgment and pain and sorrow when Jesus describes hell, when he describes this horrible, horrible place, he describes it as being outer darkness. He describes it as being outer darkness. Three times he says that hell is outer darkness. And of the three times he says that it's outer darkness, he also says that it is a weeping and a gnashing of teeth. How many of you understand? You've probably heard foolish people say that, oh, I don't care if I go to hell, I'm going to party hardy and I'm going to have a good time in hell. Jesus said that he in hell there is weeping and gnashing of teeth there is something that is constantly gnawing at your life in hell there are no parties in hell Jesus says that hell is associated with fire it is a hell fire. It is a fire that continually burns hotter than anything you could ever imagine in your life. And Jesus says this fire shall never be quenched. Don't find yourself in hell fire that shall never be quenched. Don't find yourself in a place where you are constantly burning forever and forever and forever. Watch this. Jesus says that hell is a destruction of the body and the soul. It is not just an abyss where you go and don't feel anything. It is a constant destruction where you constantly feel the tormenting pains of hell. I know this isn't a good shouting ground just for a moment, but hang on. It's going to get better after a while hell is described as downward I know that hell is described as downward because in the Bible Jesus makes reference to them casting down into hell being thrown down into hell hell is described as downward when you look at Luke's gospel chapter 16 you see the parable of the rich man and Lazarus and the rich man the Bible says in hell he lifted up his eyes it is a downward place it is a painful place it is a place of agonizing and pain and sorrow and tears it is a constant place it is cancer magnified it is AIDS magnified it is disease magnified it is destruction magnified oh my God my heart's cry tonight is that no one finds himself in this place called hell it is a place, it is a place of eternal separation from God. The rich man in Luke's gospel chapter 16 says, Abraham, just dip a little bit of water on your finger and give me just a little bit to cool my body and to cool my soul. Just a little bit of water. And Abraham says, I cannot pass from here 
to there and you cannot pass from there to here for there is a megas chasmus sterizo in the Greek language there is a great gulf that is fixed there is an eternal separation between heaven and hell and those that are in heaven can never go to hell and those that are in hell can never rise up to heaven. It is an eternal separation from God. My God in this place, don't find yourself in hell. It's a reality. Do I have anybody that believes it? it's a reality? It is eternal separation from God. But I came tonight to let somebody know that there is another choice. There is another door. There is another road. There is another pathway. There is another way which leads unto salvation and his name is Jesus Christ. He is the way and the truth and the life and no man comes to the Father but by him. He is Jesus Christ, the eternal one. There is a place called heaven where I don't need any gold because the streets are made with gold. There is a place called heaven where the walls are made of jasper. There's a place called heaven where the sea is made of crystal. There's a place called heaven where there's a tree of life and a river runs through it and the tree's leaves are for the healing of the nations. There is a place called heaven. There is a place that we can enjoy forever and forever and forever. There are mansions all over this place. For Jesus said in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And where I go, there you shall be also. And Thomas said that, Lord, we don't know the way. And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. There is a place called heaven to where we are reunited with our loved ones and all of those saints which have gone on before we re are reunited with mom and dad and grandma and granddad you don't believe me let me give you what the apostle Paul said and then I'm through and that is this the apostle Paul said for the Lord himself shall descend with a shout and the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ will rise first we understand Paul is writing to a people that are concerned about their dead. Mamas are dying and daddies are dying and grandparents are dying and going on. And Paul said, you don't need to worry about them that sleep in Jesus for there is coming a day when the Lord steps out on the cloud and the trump of God comes. Bless God, the dead in Christ. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, because to a casual reader of the text, you will miss what Paul says. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 17. He says, when the trump of God sounds, the dead in Christ will rise. But then he says, we who are alive will be caught up together for years when I read that text 
I, you know, I shouted and praised God, Sister Wells, over the fact that we would be in heaven with our families and our loved ones. But that's not the clarity of what the text is saying. What the text is saying is upon that resurrection day, my brother, I want you to be the dead in Christ. Upon that resurrection day, the dead in Christ will rise. And we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them and to meet the Lord in the air together. This could be granddad. This could be grandma. This could be father. This could be mother. But together we're going to meet the Lord. Give him a shout in this place. Together, 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 we will meet the Lord together. That together, that together, hand in hand, hand in hand, hand in hand, we go together. And I'm walking with grandma or I'm walking with granddad and together we meet the Lord in the air. My God, when I see her or when I see him, oh my goodness, we might even get a little bit undignified and just begin to hug one another and love on one another as we're going up to the realms of glory to meet on Jesus. Can I tell you, together we will meet the Lord in the air. Thank you, my brother. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. If a man die, shall he live again? If a man die, how shall he live again? In a perfected, glorified body if you're in Jesus. If a man die, where shall he live again? If he's in Christ, he will live in heaven. And let me tell you something, folks, as I close. Heaven ain't going to be a boring place. Heaven is not going to be a boring place where all you hear are the angels singing and all we do is act like zombies and all we do is do, just do all kinds of monotonous things. I plan on visiting Pluto and Jupiter and anybody, anywhere else I want to go in my glorified body. I plan on preaching at least a million years and my throat never wear out. I don't know who I'm going to preach to, but bless God, I'm going to have a glorified That bless God, we will be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. And he creates a new heaven and a new earth. It is powerful to know. So my question is this. If you were to die tonight, where would you go? See, I know where I'm going. Where would you go? If you were to die tonight, where would you go? Would you spend eternity in the realms of glory with Jesus? Or would you spend it suffering in agony in a place called hell? Stand with me tonight. Stand with me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If a man die, shall he live again? Eternity is real tonight. Eternity is real tonight. Right now you are standing in the balance between heaven and hell. Jonathan Edwards, that great awakening preacher, said it like this you are but upon a mere spider's thread a spider web dangling over the pit of hell 
and it's but by the mere pleasure and the mercy of God that he doesn't drop you into hell, but he keeps you. He holds you. He loves you. And he wants to draw you into his kingdom. Don't you want to walk with your loved ones on streets paved with gold, walls of jasper? Don't you want to walk with your loved ones in that place? I think about that song that says, I'm going to see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. But bless God, the first one I want to see is Jesus who gave himself for me. It is only by Jesus that you can escape the eternal destruction of hell and receive the glories of heaven. Who are you tonight? Sis, play. Who are you tonight? You would say, preacher, you've presented this thing and not once have I told you about a middle of the road. Not once have I said to you, there's a purgatory where somebody can pray you out of. Not once have I told you that there's, there's nothing to this thing. But bless God, there is either a heaven or a hell. There is an eternity at stake for somebody in this place. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I need some Christians to seriously pray. If you're that person tonight, you say, I don't know Jesus Christ as my Savior. And if I were to die right now, I would probably find myself in that place of destruction and torment and hell. If that's you tonight, I want you to slip up your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. Will you do it tonight? Will you do it tonight? God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Tonight? Tonight? tonight the Bible says it this way today is the day of salvation today is the day of salvation you may not have your next breath you may slip out into eternity before it's too late before it's too late would you please come to Jesus? Would you please come to Jesus? 